Welcome to the new Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news on the local Colorado economy and initiatives that focus on the development of cybersecurity economics. You don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert to get plugged in. Your host, Chris Gorog, brings it straightforward, asks the tough questions, and brings the cyber world to a level of understanding for everyone. Chris is personable and opens up with our guests on issues we all would like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join our host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. So welcome to this episode of New Cyber Frontier. On with me today, we have a guest, Ryan Roberts. And we're going to talk with Ryan. He is from Deloitte. Um, he is a senior manager and a lead subject matter expert for all of Colorado. So, um, and he has a bunch of those acronyms after his name that you recognize in all the cybersecurity guys that uh, we, we don't even know what they're about and we're in the middle of the industry. So, but it, it helps to know that we're all talking the same language. But welcome today, Ryan. How you doing? Yeah, good. Chris. Thanks for having me on. Really excited to be here. Yeah, definitely. Good to have you. And we are having uh, Deloitte on and especially Ryan to talk about um, an event that happened, a capture the flag event at the Armed Forces Communication Electronic Association Rocky Mountain Cyberspace Symposium that happened two weeks ago. And they had a great setup and a lot of uh, young people come in from the universities here local to Colorado to do uh, a capture the flag event. Um, very challenging because I know some of our guys were there from the university I teach at and uh, they enjoyed it and they said, wow, some of these ch technical challenges were different than they had seen anywhere and they do capture the flag events all over the community in different places. And some of them are working on some of those advanced letters to put after their name as well based on those type of <laughs> events. But Ryan, we wanted to talk about that and uh, take note if you're watching the video, you know, I'll play some clips that we took from the Absia event. You can see how these uh, these young people are so diligent and heads down in what they're doing. But Ryan, tell me about what you do, how you got to where you're at at first. Just about you. Give us your background. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, so I'm about uh, 22 years in the industry. I uh, started out as an infrastructure guy, so a uh, pretty strong background in server and network and uh, uh, implementation of those sorts of infrastructures and management. And then probably six, seven years ago, I uh, started to garner more of an interest in cyber, right? That as a system administrator and an architect, uh, sooner or later, <laughs> you better start thinking about how to secure these environments. Uh, and that really piqued my interest and became my focus. So I think, uh, I think my background in infrastructure serves me well and has allowed me to sort of build a team out here where we're doing uh, what uh, the DOD calls defensive cyber operations. Uh, for uh, some systems out here in Colorado Springs. So great work, important work, and just a, a phenomenal team of, of folks out here that I get the, the pleasure of, of trying to lead. So yeah. really great. So do you do you mostly government work or do you cross into the private sector? What's your main focus of what you're doing? Yeah, so uh, Deloitte does all of the above. Uh, so uh, both uh, uh, federal um, as well as commercial. We do some not-for-profit not work. So sort of having the power of an organization like Deloitte behind you that's got a pretty impressive uh, information security reputation allows me to sort of cross across different different, uh, different industries and market uh, segments, which is great, right? Yeah, and Deloitte is one of those kind of the sleeper names. They're huge, but they're behind the scenes. So a lot of people don't hear from them unless you have something big or emergency that needs to happen in your company and the firefighters come in and Deloitte takes care of it. That's right. Yeah, one of my challenges that Chris, you and I were talking about earlier is that, uh, you know, Deloitte has such a strong reputation in several spaces, um, you know, tax and, and, and accounting and those sorts of things that they sort of shadow, which is uh, that which is an, an impressive cybersecurity practice. So uh, as, as I joke, you do not want me doing your taxes, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with the cybersecurity stuff, right? So from a Deloitte brand perspective, Anything I can do to sort of link Deloitte uh, to the great cyber work we're doing is something I'm interested in. We'll be right back with the rest of today's show right after these brief messages from our sponsors. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. 
Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. So tell us about the capture the flag. First, the, the guy that set this up, I guess he's one of your, your employees from overseas. But tell us about what you did and how this came into existence in the first place. Yeah, so uh, we have a pretty good relationship with AFSIA. Uh, AFSIA, uh, um, Rocky Mountain, obviously the cyber symposium. Uh, cyber is a, is a central part of, of what they're trying to do with that event. Uh, so they had a vision, right, of, of bringing in and sort of having an interactive uh, um, cyber exercise. So we presented uh, what we have. Uh, Deloitte has built what they call the Hackazon portal, which is basically a CTF range uh, that allows folks to come in and, and try different challenges. We presented uh, AFSIA with the idea. They liked it. Uh, and so uh, we were really just proud and, and privileged to be able to present the first inaugural uh, AFSIA uh, Capture the Flag tournament uh, this, past, uh, this past February. So when, when you start putting something like this together in, in a company, do you do it for internal training? Is that what it started as? Yeah, it did. It, it, it really, for our own, our own practices, right, it, it's, it's, there's only so much you can read in a book and, and uh, theorize about. And how do we uh, quickly simulate new threats, new tactics, new systems that we may need to defend? And so Deloitte set about building this range in order to do that internally and then, of course, saw the value of bringing this to our clients, both uh, in the setting of a conference like we did with AFSIA, but also as a service that we could bring to clients. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And uh, is this something that you do in partnership with universities, high schools, to get younger people interested as well? Yes. So I am all in. So one, one of my biggest fears, of course, is, uh, you know, a cl my client's going to call and say, hey, I need a hundred of your best cyber folks today, right? Well, as we know, Chris, the supply and demand problem of talented cyber professionals, um, the, the demand far outweighs the supply. So I love this CTF um, environment and the ability to go out into the community because it, it allows me to look at, at, at our young professionals. It gives them an opportunity to train and get some experience. Mm -hmm. And then really the cream rises to the top, right? It allows me to sort of cultivate relationships with folks that are at university, at high school, um, that are working on certification and help to mentor them a little bit. And then, of course, selfishly uh, be able to extend a business card to them when they're, when they're looking to get a job, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, this has become such a, an interest of the younger people. They, there was, there's one that uh, a company called Secure Set has downtown as well in Colorado Springs every month. And I was just at the one they had last week, and there was probably 60 or 70 kids there. We're talking high school, yeah. some in college. And there was even some adults there just from the community saying, I'm going to come in and sit down and find out what is going on with this. What's all this buzz about? But this whole, let me do something to practice being in the middle of it is really growing with that younger population. And I think it's a great thing to, to have a brand that you can you know, recognize nationally like Deloitte come in and say, hey, here's something, here's what we're seeing all over the world that will help you learn to do the jobs we do. That's right. And, and you know, never too young, right? I've got a six, four and two year old uh, little girls and I'm, I'm always sitting them down and, you know, trying to show them something around STEM, around cyber and, and uh -huh. get them interested in it. And I think Part of getting the younger generation interested is, is this idea of gamification, right? How do we get them engaged in a, you know, forgive the term, but a sort of a Call of Duty-like yep. uh, presence? And I think and gamification atmosphere. is the right right game. The, yeah. The the the, the uh, teaming, the pulling into how can I engage the pleasure centers right. in what I'm doing instead of just a, a menial job that I get bored at. That's right, and we're looking at ways to how do we you know, sort of trick them into being taught about some of this technology by way of gamification and uh -huh. even, you know, just teaching them the simple mechanics of cyber, but doing that in a fun way and then being able to evolve that into where you're actually going into a CTF environment and competing again in a gamification environment. I think that's how we grow our next generation. Yeah. And, you know, my son left, he was working with some of the students that were in the, C the CTF and he left with this, I'm going to go root my phone. And at first, I'm like, ah, 
oh, that, you know, I paid eight hundred dollars for that phone. That's right. <laughs> you know, but he has got now his phone pulled apart and has the files underneath the operating system that kind of can interrupt all the things that the phone does, set himself his location he sets these. He's in Beijing when he posts on Facebook and all the everything but um all those features to the phone that you see the every time you install an app it says we want access to your contacts, yes. we want access to your location. Well he's got this thing so he can trick those apps and tell them what he wants to, them to know. And it's basically He's 15, and he's working on things that, that you know, the hackers from companies are working on. Yes. And that interest, though, at that age, they've grown up in this environment where information is everywhere. All this stuff already exists, and they just want to learn how to dig into it. And and that passion, that's another thing I'm always looking for, right? Is that I, I'm not necessarily looking for guys and girls that just are going into the cyber business because it's new or there's a lot of jobs out there. You gotta have that passion that your son has, right? I mean, you know, rooting a phone today was my generation's version of taking like the handset apart and figuring out how it works, right? Today they're 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 hacking the phone. Yesterday uh -huh. I just wanted to know how the wires connected, right? So that that passion that your son has, that's what I'm trying to cultivate and, and we all, in my opinion, should be trying to cultivate in, in our young cyber folks. Um, so they have that interest inherently and and we can just give them areas where they can flourish, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's take it er, er, back back a little bit and say, yep. now we teach all these young kids how to hack, how to get in the middle of everything. What Hopefully about the, what about the ones on. that become yeah. bad eggs? Hopefully they have a white hat on when they uh, uh, when they go forth. And, you know, part of that, of course, is, is uh, as part of a society, teaching them how to be good people, right? And the integrity that comes with that. And, you know, what is it, Spider-Man with... With great power comes great responsibility, right? I mean, the, the, we, these folks, your son, a great example. I mean, a guy who can who can root a phone and, and do those sorts of things. There's a lot of potential for good there, and 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 some potential for evil, and and steering them to the right to the white hat, uh, as as we would say in the in the cyber communities, the right way. So, yeah, and a lot of those those professional organizations, people get groups together. The letters we all have after our name, if anybody wonders what that means, uh, is a Here's something we agree to do. We agree to hold a certain set of standards, principles, right. in order to be a part of this professional member or mem member organization. That's right. Um, that then, you know, we could lose that that accreditation if we or that certification if we are doing something that's black hat or whatever. So those that's why those letters you see the CISSP the uh, what are some of the ones you have CISM after our names are just a certification that says, I've, one, learned the information I need to, two, have the, the, the what's it, the, the code of ethics, ethics. that says, yep, right. I'm going to work under the banner of what's needed to make the cyber society better. Yes, indeed. And I think there's also sort of, for that white hat that, that likes the idea of maybe a gray hat, I mean, there is a huge need for red teamers, right? For pen testers who, whose job it is, to go with permission and hack uh, an organization, right, in order mm -hmm. to find their vulnerability. So I think you could cultivate um, th that sort of mischievous nature in folks and really use that for good and say, look, we've got jobs where people will pay you to hack their stuff for them and, mm -hmm. and, and tell them where their vulnerabilities lie. So I think there's ways to, to really leverage a across the community and the personalities and get those skills and use them for good. So. We'll be right back with the rest of today's show right after these brief messages from our sponsors. Over 3 million data breaches happen every single day. That's over 2,000 records being compromised every minute. So often, we focus on securing web data access. But what if the attackers are already inside, having gained direct access to your storage through data management software? When it comes to communications that go directly into your storage devices, make SNIA your first line of protection. SNIA's conformance testing limits outdated communications that are known to be used by attackers. It works continuously behind the background to make sure your storage is protected. To find out if your data is truly secure, visit our website at www.snia.org forward slash cyber test. Those skills, that's a big thing because the conversation about skilled employees always comes up. And you have a big organization. 
tell me what type of skills you guys are looking for. So if, if our young people, our, our students are listening and they're trying to think, which direction should I go? Tell me what kind of things you're looking for and what your, where your needs lie. Yeah, so first I'm looking for somebody who has sort of a solid understanding of the cyber domain, right? That's a, a key word today. And what I mean really is how does, uh, how do computers work? How do computer infrastructures work, right? Without that sort of base understanding, uh, it, it's, it becomes more difficult for someone to be uh, good in the cyber domain. Um, so, you know, g getting some basic hardware and, and software certifications that, that show that you have an understanding of how, you know, Unix or Windows servers work, how uh, networks work, switches, routers, firewalls, uh, IDS, IPS, those sort of basic mechanics of how a network is put together. And then laying on top of that, of course, an understanding of the threats, right? Uh, why is it important to defend the network? What are the tactics that bad guys use? And I'm not looking for somebody who knows it all because anybody in this in industry that says they know it all, I, I question them uh, immediately, right? That there's just so much to understand. But I think it starts with that basic sort of, again, what I would call mechanics of, uh, of, of the cyber uh, domain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this local area, and I know there's so much government contracting, but what types of engagements are you kind of working with um, in this this area, and who you who are you aligned with? You know, what what do you know about? Uh, well, we'll start with there, and then we'll talk about the NCC and these other organizations after you kind of give us an idea of what types of things you get involved with personally. Yeah, so uh, our our company Deloitte, right? We're out here and, and keeping client names, of course, sort of out of it, but. What we're really focused on is how do we put defensive cyber operations capability on on some pretty complex and customized systems, right? These aren't necessarily commodity networks. Mm -hmm. uh, these aren't the networks that you run email and SharePoint and and those sorts of things on, but but more custom networks um, uh, that that are used for very specific mission needs. Mm -hmm. How are the, how are we getting after defense of those? And that's really something Deloitte has been focused on out here in the Springs area. Okay. So now your organization with, you know, there's a big effort here going on in Colorado Springs, uh, the National Cybersecurity Center. Yes. I know you've worked with AVSEA really close. What types of things are is Deloitte engaging with in the local community that, to help build these, you know, Colorado Springs or Colorado as a center of cybersecurity? Yeah, so uh, you and I spoke uh, before the podcast, Chris. Uh, my tagline is, you know, my, my goal from a, a branding perspective is, I want you to, th when you think of Colorado Springs, I want you to think of cyber. And when you think of cyber, I want you to think of Deloitte, right? Those things aren't necessarily happening today. So I am really focused on anything I can do from a community perspective to get Colorado Springs more in the forefront of cyber. I believe that uh, Colorado Springs could be the Silicon Valley of cyber, right? Mm -hmm. We've got the um, the right ingredients in that recipe. We've got the NCC. We've got uh, what the Air Force Academy is doing with their cyber works. Uh, we've got great universities, a, a great platform of talent that's, that's being grown here. Um, and of course, we've got the DOD community, which is very focused on, on cyber and cyber mm -hmm. defense. So I think we've got the ingredients and how does Deloitte uh, as a, as a community how does Deloitte engage in the community to sort of sponsor and move forward those initiatives? Because it, it's not only great for Colorado Springs, uh, it's great for Deloitte as well. So that, that's really, in a nutshell, what I'm focused on. So a company as big as Deloitte, and I think a couple hundred thousand employees yeah. worldwide, the National Cybersecurity Center, I've heard them say many times, I've had conversations with the CEO, talking about trying to put the N in NCC, trying yes. to get this national we have a great presence in colorado with the dod community which spans a couple of hot spots in the u.s but taking this national i think that companies like deloitte could really help turn this the other way instead of saying you know how can we get involved with the ncc how can we take what's going on here nationwide and worldwide agreed and not you know not to speak for the ncc but deloitte is obviously very engaged with the NCC, very interested in supporting them. And I think the NCC sees value uh, for precisely what you said, right? Deloitte can help, you know, let, let's let make this a center of excellence that everyone in nationwide is looking to, right, for how you go about doing cyber. And if you look at the bill that was passed, the funding that's headed towards the NCC, I think there's some great initiatives there that the NCC is going to head up 
that will that that has the potential to be uh, nationwide leaders in our field. And that that's exciting, right? Okay. So, what about um, the future of cybersecurity in general? Um, where do you see that? Well, we talked about need right now for employment, but where do you see five years from now? Where is it heading? What needs to be done? We talked about before the show that, and I've heard this from many people, cybersecurity is the wild west right now. And it's not just cybersecurity. The internet, the networks are the wild west. Yes. How do we get to a point where that's not the case and what's required to get there? Yeah, I think, uh, so, you know, I'm going to use some buzzwords here. You know, big data is a problem, right? So, so for us to effectively defend our networks, there is way more information on those networks than our ability to defend, right? And that's why you see the advanced persistent threat, the low and slow guys. They're, they're being so successful because we've got so much data that we're trying to parse in order to find out what's less than normal, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're not very good at even determining what's normal on our networks let alone than being able to identify those anomalous uh, conditions. Because let's face it, the threats we know about today, those aren't the important ones, right? It's the mm -hmm. ones that we don't know about. So how do we get in front of that by understanding what's normal about our networks and then you know finding that needle on a stack of needles? So uh, I think the short answer is we've got to get better at uh, understanding what's normal about our networks using compute memory and storage in order to process large amounts of data to find that needle in a stack of needles. And that, that, that's a big and expensive problem today that I think as compute memory and storage gets more and more commoditized will be easier and easier to do as we look out at the three, four, five year mark. And then maybe we can start to automate some of the very human intense things that we do today, right? C cyber analysis is, is a human problem. We have mm -hmm. tools, the tools can help us, but today we have to teach those tools a lot about uh, how to identify problems and, and, and defend our networks. Is it possible that three, four, five years from now with AI and big data and, and processing that we can plug a black, black box in that says, you know, cyber defense on the side and it has a couple flashing lights and it can go and learn about our networks and things? I think something like that is possible out in the five year mark, but between now and then, we've got to get a handle on our networks uh, so we can effectively defend them. So, and I've heard, when you said AI, my, my interest got, that got peaked. I've heard now, I'd say the first time I really heard this in a big way was 2014 or so, where they said, okay, we can't handle the amount of data, we can't handle the amount of network traffic, we're trying to make some use of it, but it just there's more in the growth of it and the correlation is exponential. People's ability to do anything with it is probably linear. Add more people, it's just over time. AI is going to solve this problem, was what I heard in 2014. <laughs> We're all going to come up with a magic algorithm, and I'm, there's a little sarcasm in there, yeah. that's going to fix this in that's the future. Right. <laughs> now, some of the, the, the biggest experts I've ever listened to, um, and uh, one, what, what's his name, um, Bruce Schreiner, said that the, the growth of data and new technology is morality agnostic. So... There's going to be good use and bad use of whatever comes out. Indeed. So to say that a future technology like AI is going to solve the problem for good. That's right. Yeah. Is means it can solve the problem. Inconceivable for bad. that that's <laughs> going to happen. That we're just saying some magic is going to come up. That's we right. need to solve the problem in a way looking at it differently, outside the box. I agree with you a hundred percent. You know, to quote uh, Jason Fowler, one of my guys, right? Uh, security is hard, right? This is just a hard problem and we're not going to be able to, you know, I was joking when I said the black box, it says, you know, cybersecurity on the side and we just plug that in and uh -huh. hit a button and lights start flashing, right? That, th this problem is harder than that and uh, how do we attack that in a way uh, that, that allows us to be effective and right now that's just really a lot of hard work. Understanding your networks, understanding that baseline, throwing the right compute memory and storage and tools at it to help you identify again, the needle in a stack of needles. That's where we're at today. Hmm. So do you think maybe there's a Internet 2.0 that needs to come out and say, we start from the ground up and eventually we shift everything over to that, and that's designed with some security in mind? Uh, absolutely. So, you know, uh, as we were talking again before the show, if you really look at it, we're taking 30- and 40-year-old technology, right, Wireless is a great example of that. I mean, the 802.11 standard, we, we keep putting letters after, right, which is us trying to sort of re-engineer this base standard. Mm -hmm. But 
the standard's pretty old. And so we're trying to, and that goes for Ethernet, that goes for most of the standards that we're using today. Um, and to the credit of the engineers back then, but they weren't really thinking about security when they built them. So we're trying to bolt on security. And, you know, this is an overused term, but how do we bake security into these technologies? And does that mean starting over? I, I don't know, um, but I think there's certainly some uh, reasonable argument behind the idea that, look, we need to start over again and bake defense and cybersecurity into these technologies, into these standards from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so many, you're starting to hear that come up, bubble up more and more, especially here in Colorado Springs. I've heard some of the, the three-letter name agencies here just say, please, somebody that has an idea, yeah. come talk to us. So we're looking at, I mean, some of these younger people that understand this stuff from growing up in it that are doing your capture to flags might be the next wizard that just have an idea of how to do this. That's right. And, uh, you know, those to bring those forward, um, the one thing I always kind of run into is if somebody does have an idea to bring forward, how does they, how do they get that to so people like yourself, the big companies, the organizations that can take and hit the ground with it and run off with it? Yeah, and I think the university is a great platform for that, right, that, uh, that we need to cultivate that. And, and, again, another thing that we were talking about before the show, Chris, is, you know, our industry is sort of by nature somewhere along the way, we're very tight to the vest, right? We've got an idea and, and we don't know if we want to share it. And we certainly don't want to be wrong, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think because we're in the Wild West, right, I think we all need to run with scissors here and not be afraid of making a mistake because the larger community is going to learn from that, right? So I think we all need to be a little bit more open kimono and what we're doing and what we're learning sort of for the good of the, of the greater uh, uh, ability to, to, to be more effective in the cyber domain. Yeah, and I always say that cybersecurity is probably the biggest socio-technological problem we have. And uh, to quote uh, Rebecca Chop from Denver University, she said, cybersecurity is the existential question of our age that we need to answer, kind of like in the 70s environmental protection was, um, that our Everybody needs to come together and work on this as a social problem. One thing I, I've seen almost be a hindrance to that is large companies have such a vested interest in either profiting from the data or controlling the networks and the information that the socio solution is not shared, sometimes from the larger companies down. Yes. Is there any thoughts as to the internal structure of you being Deloitte, one of the larger companies you probably even in the world, how do you break through that kind of glass ceiling almost? Yeah, I think it's opening up the conversation. I think it's partnerships like with uh, organizations like AFSIA, with the NCC, where we can bring what we're learning, right, to a larger audience, right? Not, not for capitalist reasons, but for the good of the industry. Mm -hmm. and, and that sharing of information, I think, is critical because there are a lot of organizations out there doing amazing things and if we could share not not from an ip perspective but just from a sort of approach and uh the the things that we're learning i think it's going to really uh help elevate the industry you know though share you hit another thing sharing and um for a couple of years now i've been on us cert and a couple isl sharing you know platforms people are starting to share but the information is a big conglomeration it's like listening it to a police scanner yep. all day uh, it's like reading through a hundred misdemeanors and parking tickets. Um, you get overwhelmed and, and quit bothering. So information sharing almost seems like the big data problem, where we're going to solve it with AI in the future. But <laughs> does that does that really? I mean, unless we have some way to to weed through all the the misdemeanors to find out what's really important, yeah. it's almost a glob of inhandleable information yeah so for my clients I, you know i uh, i'm a, i speak in too many metaphors but we have to nibble away at this elephant right we have to figure out how we're going to go about effectively defending the networks and effectively means in my opinion being threat driven right what are uh the top five or six critical systems that run your uh environment what are the top five or six critical threats against that uh, that infrastructure, those operating systems, uh, that network topology, mm -hmm. uh, that your exposure to other networks, right? And then, of course, on top of that, who are the personas uh, that might be a threat, right? 
uh, are, are there certain people or, or, or organizations out there that are more interested in affecting your organization? And that's how we have to drive the threat. That's how we take a bunch of, uh, you know, 100 people in a room screaming uh, about all the threats that are out there and start filtering to be effective. Okay, here are the things we need to focus on. We know we have this operating system and we know these threat actors are really interested in our goods. So we're going to focus first on how we defend against those threats, right? To nibble away at the elephant. Not that the other ones aren't important, but we've got to prioritize our approach. Mm -hmm. So what do you see, and, and I don't know how much of this you can divulge, the biggest pain points that you're seeing universally across different organizations, companies that are coming to you? It's getting eyes and ears on, on their networks. It's, it's understanding uh, the boundaries of their network, believe it or not, right? And, and where the left and right lateral limits are for that network, mm -hmm. and then putting eyes and ears on that. Are, are, are you ingesting and tracking every log and every packet that moves across your network, right? Because if you're not, if you can't continuously monitor your cyber domain, that severely hamstrings our ability to defend it, right? There could be things happening in one segment of the network that are devastating your organization that we just don't know about, right? Or there couldn't be, but the idea that, hey, I don't know that I've been hacked or I've never been hacked before, why do I care? My next question is, but how would you know if you've been compromised, right? Again, not from an ambulance chaser perspective, but I caution leaders when they say, I've never had a cyber incident or I've never been hacked, I, I caution them when I ask, well, how do you know that, right? You don't have eyes and ears on your network to understand whether you've been compromised. And I can tell you a lot of the threat actors out there, they, they score success when they've gone in and out of your network uh, without being uh, identified, right? So could they have been in and out of your network? You've never been hacked, but that's only because you couldn't identify it. So getting that baseline together, that's the, that's the big thing. Understanding what's right about your network and then being able to, to, to monitor that. I mean, it sounds so simple, but we're missing that in a lot of, a lot of places. Okay. So, Ryan from Deloitte, thanks for joining today. Kind of in closing, anything you want to get out about things you need call, call to action, things you need people to engage with, when the next capture the flag is, you know, where can we get involved? Yeah, so, you know, again, for me, it, it, it's, it's about putting Colorado Springs on the map from a cyber perspective, absolutely. I, I can't tell you how much fun doing the capture the flag was, just having students come in and, and, and watching them, again, watching young people, very smart young people have a great time. That, that goes a long way for us. It goes a long way for me personally and what I, what I want to help with in the Colorado Springs community. And then of course, it, it's a great thing for Deloitte because selfishly, I want to go and hire those guys and girls that are, that are doing great work. So um, anything that Deloitte uh, and, and Ryan Roberts can be doing to, to, to further that mission, uh, I'm all in. And Chris, I really appreciate the opportunity to come and talk with you today. It's been great. All right, thanks for joining. Thanks. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of New Cyber Frontier. Remember to get involved. Often we think that someone else will handle privacy and security in the virtual world, but you are the only one truly in command of your virtual fate. Join our mailing list so we can keep you informed of breaking news and new releases. If you have an idea, if you have a question that you would like to hear answered, or if you want to get involved with our efforts, reach out to us at NewCyberFrontier.com. We also encourage you to visit our sponsors' links as they are the ones that really make this show possible.
inaugural Rocky Mountain Cyberspace Symposium, Cyber Capture the Flag Challenge, is from the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, the Team Peak Chaos. supporting the show and we look forward to seeing you back for the next episode of New Cyber Frontier.